I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service, and for all of you out there, physical gold and silver dealer, but really specializing in custom strategies and, and helping people create plans to walk through this reset that frankly is escalating. You saw the piece that I did yesterday about the Fed losing control and what's happening in the 10 year bond market. And I really want, if you haven't seen that yet, you wanna go see that. But today we're gonna talk about the digital reality because we have been being what they call nudged in a direction and Wall Street Oh, you got to be diversified. So have stocks and have bonds and have ETFs and have mutual funds. Those are all intangible. It is critically important right now for you to be appropriately diversified. You're going to have some intangibles. Okay. But protect it with some tangibles that are truly OTS out of the system. So we're going to talk about what is going on with Microsoft. We, we talked about solar winds a couple of weeks ago or a week or so ago. Well, and I'm just going to pull you back for a year ago when Microsoft security shocker as 250 million customer records were exposed online. Remember, we are the products. And by the way, even if you don't know that you were exposed, it does not mean that you were not exposed because there are kind of lax disclosure laws and disclosure rules that are in place. And we certainly don't want any company to get a black eye from exposing your data to hackers, etc. But in the current one, so that was a year ago. Now on 3.2, Microsoft issues critical exchange server patches to thwart a wave of targeted attacks. So they're saying they're targeted. Well, they're not really targeted. They were actually blanketed attacks. And now, okay, blame it on China. Solar Winds was blamed on Russia. It doesn't really matter who's doing it. The fact of the matter is, is if you're holding whatever it is that you hold online, is subject to hack attacks. And this is a hugely growing problem. In the most current one, the number of victims of Chinese attack continues to grow rapidly. It is not contained. Absolutely not contained. And it just proves my point. If you don't hold it, you don't own it, regardless of what your perception is. This is the real problem that I have with digital currencies or cryptocurrencies. I don't know who's going to survive all of this transition mess. Once I know that for sure, then I'm going to wait until the right entry point. Because what we do know is that there is a mad rush to get into anything di digital. So even art, what have you. But keep this in mind, that financial shields are actually made of physical metal, gold and silver that is truly outside the system. This is critical. It is so important for you to be going there now because cyber attacks are getting more and more sophisticated. So the patch that worked over here, well, you know, every time they go into a system, they get to learn more and more about how they're going to approach these hacks. So in a nutshell, hackers gained access to, to Microsoft Exchange servers. Well, who uses Microsoft Exchange service servers? I mean, these are, this is the cloud. Lots of, lots of corporations, in fact, 30,000 accounts so far, so far have been compromised. They created a shell to control the work, the server remotely. And then they use that remote access to steal data. And they've got plenty of time to determine what is the value of this data right now. Just one big sweep. 
Both the most recent incident and the solar winds attack show the fragility of modern networks and sophistication of state-sponsored hackers to identify hard to find vulnerabilities or even create them to conduct espionage. They also involve complex cyber attacks with an initial blast radius of large numbers of computers, which then narrowed as the attackers focus their efforts, which can take affected organizations weeks or months to resolve. Let us not forget that there were 10 government agencies that were swept up in the solar winds attack right at the time when they're coming out and talking about, well, we're going to talk to the population and, and get ready for that digital dollar. And by the way, let's get rid of cash too. The key in here, the use of automation, which is what they use this time to launch very sophisticated attacks may mark a new frightening era in cybersecurity, one that could overwhelm the limited resources of defenders. What do you think? Digital dollar, anyone? Woohoo! Sign me up! No, I'm only kidding. I'm just being facetious. So just how vulnerable is that digital wealth? Because truthfully, the plan is for us to hold all of our titles and all of our equity in digital wealth. That is easy to spend, easy to transfer globally. Well, here's Chubb, which is an insurance company, reinsurance company. I've said for a number of quarters that the next pandemic, the exposure that looks like a virus is cyber related. You think? And here's the piece because it has no geographic or time bound to it. And we've seen a number of events over the recent years that give a glimmer of that. You better have wealth outside of the system. In fact, since 2018, ransomware claims are up 150%. And that's just what we know about. Here's the thing. Like we talked about a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the Sol Solar Winds Act. There's, oh, well, we now have to disclose. But how much of this do we not know about? What is hidden from us? If we knew that, we'd probably make different choices. Just like if we understood that the fiat money that's created by these central bankers by design is to is to create those losses of purchasing power. We'd make different choices if we truly understood that the true value of a dollar is zero and that's what we're working for and using as our, as our tool of barter, we'd make different choices. And that does not support the powers that be. 200 billion in 2021 is the ransomware cost that they anticipate. But hey, we're only in March. So that could be a lot higher than that. And overall cyber crime costs by 2025, and personally, I think this is probably really low, is 10.5 trillion. You have to decide this for yourself. I know the choice that I made. I do not own any stocks. I do not own any bonds. I do not own any annuities. I have some term life insurance. But my wealth is in food, water, energy, security, barterability, so silver, wealth preservation, so gold, community, where I spend a lot of time and also money, fiat money, what it's there for, and shelter. That's where I'm most comfortable because that's what's going to help me sustain my standard of living as this whole reset escalates. So pandemic spending drives record debt. Oh, yeah. In these programs alone, and this is before the $1.9 trillion that's going through, which we're, we'll talk about in a minute, uh, the Senate and the House right now. 
3.821 trillion. And let us not forget the easy money policies and all that new money and support that the Fed has given. This is just from the government. This is the M1, which is your base money. So your checkable deposits, et cetera, right? Why is the stock market going up? Hello, this is not rocket science. Cause and effect pump the money into the system, that money's got to go somewhere. They know this. They know the playbook. They've done it many, many times. And also keep in mind that as they're transitioning into a new system, just like they did in the 20s, you've heard of the roaring 20s, right? They lure you in with a false sense of security and look at how much more money there is. Look at how much money we're giving you, helicopter money, but hey, the Senate has never spent $2 trillion more haphazardly. Well, let's see. So the Senate is spending $2 trillion taxpayer dollars. Hmm. It's easy to spend someone else's money. Easy. Easy. And look at these deficits. I mean, they're still calling for for uh, 2020s. So this does not reflect what's happened yet in 2021. You know, the big question is, is how long can this last? And the real answer is nobody knows. Nobody knows. It will last until enough confidence is lost and or it gets too expensive for the central banks to bail it out. But as I showed you yesterday, they're losing control. All they can do is print more money, take on more debt. That's all they can do. And it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked since 1913. Well, we hit peak debt in 1997. And that, what that means is that was the last time that taking on more debt was actually stimulative to the economy, as I've shown you many times in the monetary velocity chart. It's not working. So rather than doing something different, they can't. This is their playbook. They just keep doubling down because what you did here didn't work. So let's quadruple it and see if that works. And it's not working. It's not working. It just requires more and more of the drug. So we will probably have an answer to this tomorrow as to whether or not the House passes it. And quite honestly, I think they probably will pass it. And what happens to the markets? Ba boom! More money's coming in. More money's coming in. Deutsche Bank just did a survey showing that for younger people, that they expect that 50% of the stimulus that they get are going into the stock market. Hmm. What's where? Oh, yeah! Same thing happened in the 1920s, the roaring 20s. The general population finally, suddenly had all this credit available to them and they saw the stock market going up and up and up and they started to participate in 1928. What happened in 1929? Oh yeah! So what we're witnessing right now with all these new players going into the markets, it's not new. It's the same old playbook. And we've been talking about UBI, universal basic income. And we've also been talking recently, uh, it's pretty much here. So for a couple that's making 150,000, it might be 200,000 because this is off the top of my head and I hold a lot of crap in there. Well, not crap, but a lot of data in my head. That's why I'm data gal. You know, a couple earning 200,000 could end up with an extra windfall of 14,000. Yeah, they need stimulus. They actually do because there was a time when 200,000 was real money. And if you're only making 50,000, it does still seem like it's real money. But I mean, you would have been in the absolute elite group back in 1971 when the average wage was 9,500 bucks. But then a family of four could live on that. One wage earner, not today. But 
Here's one of the reasons why it looks so much like UBI, because they raised the child tax credit, but only for a year. Well, yeah, they did the moratoriums for a certain period of time, and they've been extended. This will be extended too. The House bill passed Saturday would increase the credit amount by a thousand bucks or sixteen hundred for those with children under six, and allow taxpayers to receive the full amount as a refund for 2021. Families that are ineligible for the new three thousand dollar credit due to higher adjusted gross incomes would still be able to claim the two thousand per child credit. Additionally, the plan would make the credit payable in monthly installments (UBI) of two hundred fifty and three hundred, respectively, rather than just once a year. You know that's coming in every month. That becomes part of your income. The way you think about it, it's more likely that you're going to spend it. But I mean, you know, seriously. Under the new provision, the Treasury Department could issue advance payments. So, you know, advance payments are up to half of a 2021 child tax credit starting in July, so half the year, based on families' 2019 or 20 tax return information. Of course, you can't get through to the IRS. Um, I believe I was told today that 75% of the calls are going unanswered. Individuals making less than 40000 or 60000 for couples filing jointly would not need to repay the amount, nor would it be garnished from wages. So all of this new money that's been sloshing around, what is something like 40%, it's got to be more than that, 40% of all of the money that was created for all time has been created in the last year. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's more than that, actually. And look at this, though. GDP growth. Oh, that's awesome. We are doing so well. 10% GDP growth? Are you kidding? U.S. economy is on fire and is about to get stoked even more. Though Ed Yardeni, and I, you know, I mean, I'll say this. I really like Ed Yardeni's work. You see it in my work all the time because he does those fabulous graphs that compare the S&P 500 to the central bank balance sheets. I don't necessarily always agree with him when I listen to him doing interviews. However, I agree with this. Too much of a good thing is often just too much. The economy is hot. The economy is not hot. The stock market is hot because of all that money, that free money. The real estate market is hot because of, you know, people not being evicted, not having to pay your mortgage, all the other little tweaks they did. So the economy is not hot and will get hotter with the bonfire of the fiscal and monetary insanities. The only piece in here that I disagree with is I don't think the economy is hot because what I think is really happening, and this has been, I mean, they've been doing this for a long time, is substituting, I'll show you this, well, I'll just print that out, inflation as a substitute for real growth. Yeah. Because if it costs you more to buy the same goods and services, they're going to call that growth. But this is the CPI. I don't know. You tell me. That looks like inflation to me. But, you know, what can I say? Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. When what we're really experiencing and what inflation really is, is the loss of purchasing power. But you listen to the talking heads in mainstream media, global growth expectations are driving rates. It's the growth. It's non-inflation. I can't make this up. I don't know. I mean, what is she? I mean, this is what Fed Chair Powell is telling us. This is what they want you to believe. 
that this is this inflation that they've created by all of this money printing and this money pumping is growth. It's not growth. It's debt. It's debt and the destruction, the final destruction of whatever teeny bit of purchasing power yet remains in this country in the US dollar, but that's true globally. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Inflation is not growth, it is destruction. It is just the opposite. So you got to ask a question because everybody, and we're going to look at it, knows what's been happening with gold and silver last day or so. What or so? Why do central banks hate public ownership of gold? Because they certainly own a lot of it themselves. Well, we just talked about this yesterday. The U.S. Treasury's borrowing rate in the repo market goes negative four and a quarter percent. It was cheaper to pay the regulatory fine of not living up to your contract, which is only 3% versus the four and a quarter percent. And they've stopped reporting on the treasuries, how much they're doing in the repo markets. I mean, When they stop telling you what's going on, that means something really nasty is going on and they are losing control, but they don't want you to run to the safety of gold because when you have that physical gold in your possession, it's outside of their ability to do anything other than use perception management tools like this to make you go, oh, oh, look, no, stocks are up, Bitcoin is up. Gold is down, silver is down. Give me stocks at Bitcoin and real estate. Give me those overvalued assets or instruments, as the case may be. Don't give me real gold. No, no. Why is gold going down? Because it's really simple. A rising gold price is an indication of a dying fiat currency and a failing system. How close are we? Pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. I can't pinpoint the day. And maybe more money printing will postpone things. I know they want to wait until 2023 because that's when they think they'll have the digital dollar ready for us. Maybe, maybe not. But do you really want to hold all of your wealth in cyberspace? I don't. A truly diversified portfolio has some intangibles. Gotta have fiat. It's our tool of barter. But it also has real money tangible wealth. And there's even diversification within that. And if you want to know more about that, well, you can talk to any of our consultants and they'll, they'll explain it to you. But you got to have some gold. You got to have some silver. You got to have some pure asset protection. You got to have some growth, real growth, not inflation, real growth. How do you get real growth? Here you go. This is pretty simple and not rocket science. You buy an undervalued asset that is in a long-term positive trend. This graph only goes back two years. Can you put that back up for a second? How do you know when something is in a positive trend? You see higher and higher lows. That's how you know it. Because if you keep getting higher and higher lows, I guarantee you, can't give you a lot of guarantees. I can give you this one. You keep getting higher and higher lows, you will get higher highs. How do you know when something's undervalued? Well, what historically, what's its value been? I can tell you absolute, no doubt in my mind, minimum, minimum, minimum valuation of one ounce of physical gold, easily way above 12,000 bucks an ounce. 
So at 17, well, it's 16, it closed at 16.78 on the spot market. That is a paper flipping contract. At the same time, the demand for the physical, and this is true for silver too, demand for the silver has and, and gold has physical has exploded. We are not inside of a real capitalist supply and demand market. We're inside of a corporatist, fascist, choosing winners and losers market. And we, the public, we are not too big to fail. We're just about the right size. So you've got to protect yourself, please. What I found yesterday uh, that I showed you, so if you haven't seen that one yet, go in, see it, go to our blog, follow the links, read it for yourself. You'll go see all of a sudden flat line, no reporting on the repos or the reverse repos. Why? What are you hiding? Oh, well, wait, you took away M3, which is the broadest base of money in 2006. Why? What are you hiding? How much new money is really being created? That's what you're hiding. And what are you hiding now with this? How badly the treasury market, the bond market, the 10-year treasury is the foundation of the global markets. It's the largest one and it's falling apart. Get protected. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Get it done. Please get it done. So today, I had a great conversation with Ken Kenneth Amaduri over at Crush the Street. We talked about a lot of, it was a lot of fun. We ran a little bit longer than he was anticipating because we were frankly having such a good time. So don't miss that one. Um, the, just stay tuned to the socials and we'll let you know when the link goes up. And next week, I'm going to see my good friend, Lior Gans. So he'll be on a coffee with Lynette. Not sure where he is in the world at the moment, but I always like to get his perspective on things. And on Thursday, March 18th, I will be on with Daniela over at Stansbury Research. I'm very, very excited about that. This is the first time I'm going to be on that channel. And I know Jacqueline had been working on it for a long time. So I don't know if you're watching or not, Jacqueline, but I got to give you a shout out because she really does such a fantastic job. So just keep in mind, if this hasn't shown you as if what I showed you yesterday, as I'll keep showing you because without any doubt at all, it is so time to cover your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we actually use a real wealth shield that's made up of physical gold and physical silver because paper and promises just don't help. So I will be on with Eric for the Q&A tomorrow. And if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, just hit that button and subscribe. We'll let you know when we're going live. And really, I mean, right now, I would say it's critical to share, share, share. Please share. And until tomorrow, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.